31st, St. Joan of Arc, Virgin Third Order. The daughter of a peasant farmer, Joan of Arc was born on January 6th, 1412, at Domremy, on the left bank of the Meurs in Lorraine. At an early age, she became a shepherdess. While tending her flock, she sought to live a life of close and constant union with God. She spent much time in prayer and rose to a high degree of contemplation. Although documentary proof that she was a tertiary is lacking, there is no doubt whatever that she lived like a tertiary, and her contemporaries actually called her a tertiary. Existing evidence establishes a serious probability in the eyes of the most impartial critics, while others cannot help seeing in it a well-grounded motive of certainty that St. Joan of Arc was a member of the Third Order of St. Francis. There are plenty of historical questions no better founded than her membership in the Third Order, and yet they are commonly accepted. When Charles VII succeeded to the throne of France in 1422, the so-called Hundred Years' War between France and England was still being waged, and the new king was recognized south of the Loire only, while in the north, Henry VI of England, who was still an infant, was the acknowledged lord. In 1428, the English began the siege of Orléans. At this time, Joan of Arc, who was only 16 years old, was summoned by heavenly voices to pacify her country, which was torn also by civil strife, and to deliver it out of the hands of the English. Leaving her home in February 1429, she convinced the doubting Charles VII of the, the veracity of her divine, divinely inspired mission in March, entered Orléans at the head of a small army in April, and by violent sorties relieved the city in May. From that time on, she was called the Maid of Orléans, or La Pucelle. Joan of Arc then drove the English from the Loire, Auxerre, Troy, and Chalon, and conducted Charles VII to Reims, where he was crowned in July the same year. Since King Charles VII hesitated to continue the war after the feudal siege of Paris, Joan left the court in March 1430. Two months later, she was taken a prisoner by the Burgundians and sold by them to the English. Before a carefully packed ecclesiastical court, she was tried for heresy and witchcraft and found guilty. Handed over to the secular arm, she was burned at the stake on May 31, 1431. A revision of her mock trial, ordered by Charles VIII in 1456, declared her innocent. She was beatified in 1909 and canonized in 1920. Two years later, she was declared patroness of France. On Christian Fortitude Reflect on the courage of St. Joan of Arc, who, although a weak maiden, heeded the call of God to deliver her country from the invading enemy, and before an unjust judge, steadfastly, even in the face of death, defended her mission as coming from God. Truly one can point to her when Holy Scripture asks, Who can find a valiant woman? Proverbs 31.10 if those who have a special task to perform, a vocation to the religious life, for instance, would, in the face of difficulties, draw upon the courage of humility, there would not be so many desertions or apostasies which later cause such bitter remorse. Rather, we should be able, with St. Joan of Arc, to gain many blessings for ourselves and for others, and at the end of our life, we too could address our Heavenly Father in the words of the Savior. 
I have fulfilled the work which thou hast given me to do. John 17, 4. Consider that Christian fortitude must be practiced with every virtue. That is why it is called one of the cardinal virtues. It is the virtue with which we must overcome all the difficulties and the opposition which we encounter in trying to do good. Here in the world, virtue and goodness are continually meeting with difficulty and opposition. The steadfastness with which we bear these trials makes up our merits. Heroic Judith urged the Israelites to persevere when she said, quote, So did our fathers and all who have pleased God pass through many tribulations, remaining faithful. End quote. Judith 8.23 Can we not do what they did? Consider how Christian fortitude is acquired. Work faithfully at the task assigned to you. If your conscience is witness to your fidelity, then you can, with unbounded confidence, expect God to do his part. Without re that reliance, there is no fortitude. A troubled conscience always forecasts grievous things. Wisdom 17.10 he who does his work with an upright heart and aims only to do God's will knows that help will always be at hand when needed, and he may say with the psalmist, In te domine speravi, in thee, O Lord, have I hoped. Let me never be put to confusion. Psalm 70, verse 1. Prayer of the Church. Grant us, we beseech thee, O Lord, perseverance and obedience to thy will, that in our days the people who serve thee may increase both in merit and in number. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Joan of Arc, pray for us.